Have you ever wondered what the specific purpose is of your non-playing arm? Well, let me tell you that it does have a specific purpose. My name is Olaf Kozolowski. This is Table Tennis Tech. Luc, Luc blijf hier. Alsjeblieft, jongen. Ik ga weer een balk op mijn slagen. Ja, oké, okay, maar als je daar blijft staan, dan weet je dat hem harder gaat komen. Hè? Kom dichterbij. Ja, dank u wel. Ik ga goed mikken. Ik ga, maar ik probeer altijd goed te mikken. Ik snap niet van waar dat idee komt dat ik u zo gezegd wil raken. Wat? Ja, vorige keer op mijn hoofd. Vorige keer op je hoofd, dat is waar. Dat is waar. Vorige keer was het grappig, dat is waar. Maar jij kon er ook mee lachen? Dat is waar. Oké, okay, kom. Allee. My name is Olaf Kozolowski. This is Table Tennis Technalytics. Let's go. Op de GSM, zoals moet. Top, meneer de grote speler. Dat is moeilijk, dat is moeilijk. Hey, je moet dat niet, niet kleineren. Don't patronize me. So guys, welcome back to another video. I am here as I always am in Antwerp, in the Kilipong Hall, hall of my sponsor. And today we're going to look at the other arm. You would say that it just hangs there doing nothing, but it does have certain uses to it. And mainly three, I'll just name the three of them. So one is acceleration, two is stopping the movement and guiding the movement, and number three is just overall stability. Uh, let's start, let's just start with the third one, with the overall stability. You'll see many people just, they don't know what to do with this arm. Some people, they just leave it right next to this, uh, to, besides their body. Some people will hold their shoulder when they're playing a little bit, or they'll even like do a Napoleon stance. And none of these are really what you want. There is not like one fixed position that your arm should be in, but you just have to remember that it serves a specific purpose with stability and let's just put guiding the movement together with it. So normally, because your shoulders play such a big role whenever you're playing to guide the ball, wherever you're going to play, well, you have to keep account that this arm, this shoulder also plays a role. So for example, you have to always push them a little bit forward. So that means that whenever you see somebody playing and they have this movement where both of their arms are going a little bit too much upwards, it looks fine at first until they get out of position. You see, if you push them in the middle or into the deep forehand or wherever and they get out of position, you'll quickly find out how much the shoulder plays a big role in keeping the ball pushed forward and keeping themselves pushed forward. You see, once they get here, they're a little bit too late and they still keep on doing this, you'll, they'll just fall behind, they'll just fall backwards. And so therefore, you want to keep in mind that whenever you're playing, that this arm, mainly with forehand, let's just say with forehand, that this arm doesn't really go too much upwards. Again, because once you get into a tough situation, you'll fall backwards. Okay. Next purpose or purposes that your non-dominant arm serves when playing is that it helps you with accelerating and decelerating or not even decelerating but just stopping your movement in time. If I were to be completely relaxed here and I were to play a forehand and this will just swing like a pendulum all around my body, all, all over the axis of my body, then I would find it very difficult to stop my movement just in time because I would just keep on swinging through. So therefore your arm it serves a little bit, together with your core and everything else, it serves a little bit the purpose of stopping your movement. But not only that, as I said, also acceleration. You see, many people have this certain problem where they let the playing arm take over their movement. And you mainly see this happening in forehand. You'll see somebody just, either they're standing a little bit on this leg or they're trying to accelerate too much with their arm and they forget that your body is just one sort of chain where every part plays a certain role in having the perfect body mechanics, physical mechanics. So here's a little tip for you. Try to think of your other shoulder as the accelerator whenever you're turning your upper body. That is a tip that I received from an older coach of mine and he just showed me that if you, if you set in this shoulder as the start of your movement whenever you're playing forehand, so instead of thinking of this shoulder as dominating the movement, dominating the swing, dominating this acceleration, you have to think as this one 
being like the protagonist, this one being more of the antagonist. So here, try to pay attention. So first I'm going to do it uh, incorrectly by sort of playing dominantly with this shoulder. See, so here, the risk that also often happens is your arm will be too fixed. There will be too much tension in your arm and you want to stay quite a bit relaxed. So now, if I will use this shoulder as a sort of accelerator for my body, you will see that this one will just follow suit. So here I'm turning here first and then I'm following. So turning the shoulder, acceleration and following. So if you set everything correctly and you push off from the legs and yeah, all the power is here, everything is tight where it should be, everything is relaxed where it should be relaxed, well then you'll see how much extra power, extra quality you can generate in your balls, in your shots, balls. Dan moet je mee oppassen hè? Want daar mensen die, de, ah, die gaan beginnen. Maar oké, okay, So guys, that was the video. I think a rather quick one, but nevertheless something which is not very often discussed. But it was something which helped me along the way with really taking like a further step, an extra step in my forehand and the quality in which I can play my forehand with. So hopefully you appreciated the video, you liked the video. So if you did, or if there are any suggestions on your side or anything, any comments or something you didn't understand, please just leave them down below. I'll take a look at it. And I always appreciate the feedback and the discussion that can come from these types of videos. So again, thank you very much. Hopefully I will see you in the next video.